All right, gentlemen, so let's start this off with one of the coolest uniforms out there that I had the privilege to wear, and that is the flight suit. Now, for this video, I'm going to give the credit to the United States Air Force, but I know that various air forces around the world did develop this. And in 1917, when we saw the first flight suit, the Air Force actually didn't exist. It was known as the Army Air Corps, and even then, it was something that a lot of people in the Army did not like. They did not see the future as being up in the air. But when it comes down to it, the pilots, they needed a function piece of clothing that was be one piece that would keep them warm, would also keep them cool, was something that would be, most importantly, fire retardant. Now, it wasn't truly fire resistant, but it was something that fire in a cockpit was a big danger and something that you needed to be able to protect yourself. And that's exactly what this did. You would also supplement it with some really cool jackets, all different types from bomber jackets to A1 flight jackets to leather flight jackets. I mean, there were all types of flight jackets, but it was a, it was something that was a layering piece. And what's cool about this, I remember in the Marine Corps and I know the Air Force and, uh, you know, even Army helicopter pilots are able to do this. You can actually wear this as your daily uniform. And let's face it, movies like Top Gun have made the flight suit synonymous with cool. Although even in the 1980s, you weren't actually able to wear a polo shirt underneath a flight suit. Every time we'd see this, it would crack people up. But again, got to give this one to the Air Force because I do think that they have done a great job keeping their flight suits top of the line using the best materials, uh, pockets in just the right places. And I think the other services kind of take their cue from what the Air Force is doing. So yeah, the flight suit is definitely one of the coolest uniforms out there. Next up on this list, let's go over to Asia and let's look at the new Indian uniform. I've got a picture here of the Para SF and look at Rafi. I mean, this guy is pumped about the new uniform and he should be because it fits good. It looks good. It's got actually a little bit of a 90s vibe to it. Look at those boots right there. If you look at the boots that are going with this, they went with the black. I love the fact that they're going to be able to polish their boots and spend two hours every night doing something that makes no difference except in the life of new recruits making their life hell. So guys, love the fact, actually seriously though, the uh, the colors, it just works well. I also like it, you know, in general with that hat, yeah, with that beret that the uh, they've got right here, that maroon one. I know not everyone can wear this, but uh, yeah, it just looks good. And speaking of Indian uniforms, I don't know which uniform this one is, but I love the fact that we've got, looks like a cravat right there. The color around the neck. I mean, this thing just looks good. I haven't seen this since, you know, Scooby-Doo. Fred pulled off a cravat that well. But seriously, guys, I actually like this look. So if you know what uniform this is, let me know in the comments below. Next up, let's talk about the new dress uniforms over in Chile. And what I like here is they went back, it looks like a hundred years to the Bavarians. And maybe it was some of those Germans that snuck over after World War II. I don't know who had this impact here, but these things look really good. Especially, I love the summer dress. You've got those white trousers with those dark jackets, the shoulder pads with the little bit of lace going down. You've got the guys on horseback and look at those hats. Yes, they are pompous and they are over the top, but they look good. They still got some of those spikes on the top. Some of you guys maybe want, you know, the pickle hat. What's up with that? Well, in case you didn't know during a cavalry attack, you would deny somebody actually hitting you on top of the head, supposedly with that spike. Uh, they could hit you in other areas, but you know, the most powerful Powerful blow was come from above. Point being is these guys are going back to history. Maybe not their history, but I still have to say it is a cool looking uniform. Absolutely love it. And having been to Santiago, Chile, I got a soft spot in my heart for the Chileans. Next up, we've got the service dress blues of the United States Navy. And many of you guys may be surprised I'm even putting the Navy on this list. And you know, the squids have to give us Marines rides, so I appreciate them. But seriously, it's a good uniform, especially when it fits well. And that's the only area I think a lot of officers could probably do better if they actually got that adjusted to fit them. But hey, they can't all be in Marines. But that Cracker Jack uniform, go back to World War II. We've got an iconic image here of a sailor kissing probably some random woman he met in New York Times Square. Square. You have to give it to those sailors and that Cracker Jack uniform. Absolutely love it. It was very functional. Yes, the white, not so much, but that dark uniform is actually something you could work in. Although they, you know, probably, yeah, should be careful because they're somewhat expensive. Although they can get issued new ones. Point being is that uniform, it's unique. It's classic Navy. And I have to say, I absolutely love it, especially when it fits well. Uh, yeah, just a great, cool looking uniform. Next up, let's talk about the Turkish Air Force officer uniform. So what I love about this one is the use of mustard yellow. In small amounts, it works, but if used in larger amounts, I've never seen it work, except in this case. With that dark blue classic uniform right there, the yellow just really 
pops and it really makes it. They didn't try to overdo, you know, there's nothing else crazy on this uniform. It really just draws the eye in and it really just makes the uniform work well put together. Yes, they've got that nice buckle right there on the belt. Uh, we've got the white gloves, which finishes the look, but in general, that yellow just really sets it apart from a lot of other militaries out there. You also see this yellow popping up in some of their other uniforms. I don't think it looks as good as it does on the Air Force uniform. So for that, you know, just a good use, great use of color, a good selection the way it looks like these uniforms and a lot of these guys are well fitted. I got to give them high marks for cool. Next up, let's come back to the United States and look at the new Army Green Service uniforms. I love the fact that they went back to World War II, grabbed their most iconic uniform and brought it into the future. Army, if you can't come up with any new ideas, you know, hey, steal from the past. No problems with that. And uh, I think this uniform does look really good, especially when it's tailored to fit. And that's the key. Army officers, Army enlisted, you guys already know this, but your officers, make sure that you take it and get it adjusted to fit you. These small things, they make a difference, but you want to make sure that sleeve's not too long and yeah, get those, get that fruit salad all nice lined up. The cover's good to go in that cover is word for your hat in military slang. But uh, yeah, looking at these right here, the only thing I think maybe could improve the footwear, but it is what it is. They should actually go for leather shoes that they polish up, not for patent leather. You see a lot of people in the military use this. It's just, you know, it's, it's a cheap way to avoid having to spend two hours shining your boots or shoes. Now, this next uniform, I don't have a whole lot of info about, but I did like I got to hit on four countries with it. Basically, it's the new Nordic uniform. So, my understanding is that you've got Sweden, you have Norway, you have Denmark and Finland, all using this uniform right here. This looks like not a dress uniform, just their daily wear. And what I love about this is the functionality. Now, I've been talking about boots and shining and polishing boots. That would be the one thing I would take away from this because, again, if you're going for true functionality, I think the United States Army and Marine Corps did this. This right. We went with a boot that never requires to be polished. It's one that just gets the job done. And that's the only way I would improve this uniform. But looking at the cargo pants, I mean, those look comfortable, well-fitted. I like how they actually have a lower pocket near the ankle, which is something a lot of guys ask for and just incredibly useful. I wonder how they're actually, what type of adhesive they're using on this. In the U.S. military, I know we went to a Velcro, which absolutely a lot of us hated because it actually made noise and you wanted something that was silent. But I get it because it's cheap to manufacture and it actually does a good job of keeping things in their place. But uh, yeah, the trousers and then that jacket, very simple, very clean. They've got the rank right there in front. And, and this is definitely a day-to-day, -day, maybe even a combat type uniform because you have nothing that's drawing attention, no colors. This is going to blend in. And, you know, when it comes down to it, you're not saluting in a combat zone anyway. But uh, yeah, I really like this. It looks very functional. It looks, it looks good. Now for this next uniform, let's jump back over to the United States. And I want to talk about the U.S. Army again. The Army has tons of uniforms, but this one is perhaps the most cool. And that is their 1st Cavalry's Division Horse Cavalry Detachment. Yes, that's a bit of a mouthful. But this uniform right here, yes, they still actually ride horses. These guys, I mean, I didn't even know this existed. That's pretty cool. Did a little bit of research and uh, I knew that you would see these guys like reenactments and stuff, but I didn't realize that they were actually army soldiers that were getting paid to actually ride these horses in various ceremonies and do a lot of training. So not only are they all expert horsemen and they have to train on the animals and they work with them closely and they're traveling around the United States going to different events, uh, just representing the United States Army. But those uniforms, again, I love the fact that they've kept the historic uniforms. In addition, the weapons that they carry. I mean, these guys have, yeah, the revolvers. They've got the old rifles. Um, really cool to see the Army actually giving a lot of credit and a lot of love to its history. History. And when I saw these, yeah, it was just like, these guys look cool. This is an awesome uniform. Hopefully someday I'll be able to see this in person. Next up, we've got the Royal Regiment of Scotland. And in case you don't know, this is the only Scottish line infantry regiment of the British Army Infantry. It has three regular battalions and two reserve battalions. And yeah, I have to give it to the Scots that they have always maintained the kilt. And this is, I mean, their ceremonial uniforms here look friggin' amazing. Now, when it comes to the shoes, I don't know exactly what those are. Maybe those are derbies. They've got the socks and then they've got the kilt. Now, there are many parts of a kilt. Does anyone know actually what that front part of the kilt is? I'll let you answer down in the comments below. I know I've got my Scotsman out there that can uh, 
answer this little bit of trivia. But guys, yeah, I just love, again, the attention to detail, the sticking with history. I mean, if you're a Scotsman and you're going to serve in Her Majesty's military, this is the unit that you want to be a part of. Next up, we've got the Argentinian Mounted Grenadiers. I've actually talked about them before in another video, but I wanted to bring these guys in because I talked about that mustard yellow. The Turks were doing pretty well. I think the Argentinians, though, one-upped them. With that introduction of red, that dark blue uniform, and on a horse, yeah, it's hard to beat. You notice a lot of these top picks actually are riding horses. There's just something about the boots. There's something about, yeah, being on top of a horse that just sends that signal of cool. Yes, you've got your tanks, you've got your jets, but a horse, another animal ride, you know, it's just amazing. Harks back to history. Now, let's talk about the overall uniform build. Right here, I like that they've got a close cut. Again, the darker colors in general. The sash going in the front. The shoulder pads built up right there with a little bit of lace going down. And let's talk about that helmet. Again, this is an old school one. It's something that harks back to something like 200 years. Yet these guys are pulling it off. Is it functional? Probably not much. Does it look good? Oh, yes, it does. Now, this next unit and uniform is relatively unknown outside of Pennsylvania. And that's too bad because these guys have a storied history, one of the oldest continuous units in the United States. They predate the revolution. And that's why they're able to basically have their own rules when it comes to uniforms. And actually all the members, they are former servicemen who then re-up and join this exclusive unit. What am I talking about, gentlemen? The 1st Troop Philadelphia City Cavalry. Now, technically they're part of the Pennsylvania Army National Guard and the U.S. Army, but this unit is special. All the members of this unit forego military pay. They elect their own leaders, officers, and they own their own army. Now, they're a relatively small unit. Hence, all of these uniforms have to be custom made. And that's actually a big advantage for them because they're going to fit their bodies. They also have stuck with tradition because they're not having to fall under army regs. They're not having to change a lot of things here or there. Now, they're still part of the army and they're one of the most decorated units in the U.S. military. But these guys, yeah, this one was really interesting because you look at these uniforms, I mean, you feel like this stuff hasn't changed for hundreds of years. From the inter And what I really liked right here in the chest area, right here, the front of the uniform, you've got just a really detailed embroidery. I love how they still kept, you know, the shoulders built up, um, the use of swords, the use of riding trousers. I mean, they fit you well. You got to be in good shape, probably still be part of this unit. The riding boots, everything about this and those covers, those hats. Ceremonial, yes. Practical, no. But right there, I mean, there's just something about that pomp that's, we don't have anything else like this in the United States. And for that reason, I had to put these guys up high on the list because I absolutely love seeing, you know, the dedication to country and service. Now, really quick, honorable mention, the NASA astronaut uniform. This thing just reeks cool because there's nothing else like it. And it's probably the most expensive uniform by far on this list. Now, right here, we got Johnny Kim, former Navy SEAL. A lot of people don't know that actually the astronauts, usually the pilots and a big part Part of the crew are active duty military. I had the chance when I was in the Marine Corps to meet a number of astronauts. It's one of the coolest things to talk to somebody that has been able to see the world basically from outside of itself. But yeah, that uniform right there, whether it's the bright orange, whether it's the white, uh, whatever, you know, it, it is just so friggin' cool because yeah, it's out of this world. Now, seriously, gents, taking the top list, you know that it could be none other than my United States Marine Corps, but let's go with the mess dress uniforms. Yes, this is something not a lot of people see. This is like if you're going to visit the president, you have a Marine Corps ball, you put on this mess dress uniform. This is something that officers, staff, NCOs, that, uh, you know, senior enlisted that they wear and they love the look of, the fit, immaculate. And what tops off this whole look is the boat cloak. Yes, this is still authorized. Wearing a cloak with this, yeah, it puts you almost at God tier. All right, guys, so I know I missed a lot of uniforms. The French Foreign Legion, I didn't talk about the Italian Carbonaries. I did not cover, you know, Coldstream or the, the Royal Guards over in the UK. Guys, guess what? I cover more in this video right here, talking about from some of the more outlandish to some of the coolest to some of the more interesting uniforms you're going to see out there. I cover it here if you want to hear my thoughts on the Vatican Swiss Guard. I cover it. Click on the video. Go check it out, guys. I'm putting together a series here. Really liking it. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you. And yeah, go check it out. Good video.